Hello students, this is Mr. Courtney here. And in this video we'll talk, we're continuing on atomic structure. We're gonna look at mass number, atomic num atomic mass. We're gonna also look at isotopes and abundance. So our objectives will be to we got discuss mass number and atomic mass. We're gonna name isotopes, calculate neutrons in an isotope, and then calculate the atomic mass of an element. So we know atoms are composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus and electrons surround the nucleus. Atoms of one element differ from other atoms of another because they have different number of protons. So we say they have a different number, different atomic number. Now the discovery of the neutron led scientists to the realization that atoms of the same element can have a different number of neutrons. And these are called isotopes. So all atoms of a given element are not identical as we see here with these hydrogen atoms. This is hydrogen one because it only has one proton. Hydrogen two has a proton and a neutron. So that's how we end up with the two. Hydrogen three has two protons and, sorry, two neutrons and one proton giving us a total of three. So its mass number is three. So these numbers at the end here signify or they represent the mass number of the atom. In this case, since that they're atoms of the same element, they're called isotopes. So it represents the mass number of the isotopes. So atoms of the same element with different number of neutrons or different mass numbers are called isotopes. So remember mass number is equal to protons plus neutrons. So sodium has a mass number of 23 and a mass number of 24 here. The number of protons in an isotope gives the identity of the element. And we'll see that. So here sodium has 11 protons. So we know this element is sodium or this atom is in sodium even if we were not told this here. So when we add our protons and neutrons together we get 23. So this is sodium 23. We add 13 and 11, our protons and neutrons, we get sodium 24. So its mass number is 24. And the mass number here is 23. The number of protons in an isotope gives the identity of the element. And the sum of the protons and neutrons gives the mass number. So if we have an element, an isotope, with five protons and six neutrons. We look at five protons to help us identify the element. So we look on our periodic table and we look for an atomic number of five. And that tells us it's boron. It's boron because it's atomic number, which is here. This is atomic number is five. The mass number, which you said is sum of protons and neutrons would be 11. So to name this isotope, we use the name of the element followed by a hyphen and then the mass number. So this is called boron 11. So the mass number is at the end of the name of an isotope. An atomic mass, the atomic mass or atomic weight or sometimes called the average atomic mass is a weighted average mass of the atoms in a naturally occurring sample of the isotope. The weighted average mass reflects both the mass and the relative abundance of the isotopes as they occur in nature. The atomic mass is measured in atomic mass unit, which is one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So on the periodic table, the number we see at the bottom is our atomic mass. The mass of an atom is extremely small. Thus, the masses of atoms are compared to a standard reference isotope, which is based on isotopic composition. The isotopic composition of an element is the percent abundance and mass of its isotope. So carbon-12 is the reference isotope and has been assigned an atomic mass of exactly 12 atomic mass unit. To calculate the atomic mass of an element, Multiply the mass of each isotope by its abundance and add the products. So this sign here means the sum of or the summation of. Depending on the number of isotopes we have, 
if we have two isotopes we do the mass times the abundance for the first then we do the mass times the abundance for the second and we find the sum of these so let's look at an example we're told in a mole of chlorine we have approximately 75 percent atoms being chlorine 35 and 25 percent being chlorine 37. what is the approximate atomic mass of chlorine so we have to remember when we name the isotope the number at the end is the mass number we're given the mass and the percent abundance of each isotope so all we simply do is mass times percent and find the sum of it for each isotope and we get 35.5 atomic mass units a couple things to note here notice the abundance of the isotopes we have 75 percent 30 chlorine 35 and 25 percent chlorine 37 since chlorine 35 is in greater abundance we expect the atomic mass to be closer to 35 than it is to 37 and here we see that it's 35.5 which is closer to 35 than it is to 37 also the percent abundance we have to remember that a percentage means out of 100 so 75 percent means 75 out of 100 that's why i'm dividing by 100 here and that's why i'm dividing by 25. in one mole of boron we have approximately 80 percent of the atoms being boron 11 and approximately 20 percent being boron 10. so we need to find the approximate atomic mass of boron based on this data so let's make a couple observations here since boron 11 is a great is in greater abundance then we expect the atomic mass to lie closer to 11 than it does to 10. so we do mass times percentage for boron 11 plus mass times percentage for boron 10 and that would give us 10.8 atomic mass units which is closer to 11 than it is to 10. now now that we understand that percentages are out of 100 Let's look at doing this a different way. We can decimalize our percentages. That is, convert our percentages to decimal. Since we're already dividing by 100, so 80 divided by 100 is 0.8. That's a decimal. 20 divided by 100 is 0.2. So whatever, whatever percentage we have, we need to divide by 100 to get rid of, to convert our percentage to a decimal and we still end up with the same answer of 10.8 atomic mass units now we have three isotopes of magnesium occurring in nature and their abundances and their masses are given we need to calculate the atomic weight of the magnesium now we look at it here we have the the mass number of the isotope and we have the mass in the amu and there are two totally different numbers approximately the same but they're different why is it that the mass is less than the mass number if the mass is based on the number of protons and neutrons then we expected it to be a whole number and we see here that the mass of the isotope is not it has to do with the fact that there has to be some force holding the, at the particles in the nucleus together so what is responsible for holding the protons and neutrons together in the nucleus some of that mass provided by the protons and neutrons is converted into energy to hold the nucleus together and we know that there's lots of energy stored in the nucleus because of the existence of nuclear power or the amount of energy we're able to reap from nuclear energy nuclear power or from the nucleus so in this case what we're going to do we're going to use the mass not the isotope or the mass number we're going to use the mass of this isotopes to calculate the atomic weight so we do since we have three isotopes magnesium 24 magnesium 25 and magnesium 26 we take the mass times percentage for each of these isotopes and find the sum of them and that gives us 24.31 amus or atomic mass units i simply rounded it off to two decimal places or better yet to four significant figures which we will talk about later so let's look at this example here we're given the atomic weight of gallium we're given the masses of two naturally occurring isotopes 
68.9257 for gallium 69 and 70.9249 for gallium 71. Calculate the percent abundance for each isotope. So we're going the opposite way now. We're given mass and atomic weight and we need to find percent abundance. So what we need to do is start by writing what we know. How do we calculate atomic weight or average atomic mass or atomic mass, whichever one you want to call it. We know that it is a mass times percent or mass times abundance. So we do the percent of gallium 69 times its mass plus the percent of gallium 71 times its mass. We know when we add these two together, these two values we end up with together, we're going to get the atomic weight of gallium, the atomic mass of gallium. But we have two different variables, or we have two variables in one equation. We cannot solve this equation like this. So what if we say we know a percent is out of 100? So that means we add the percentage abundance of gallium 69 and the percent abundance of gallium 71. It will be equal to 100. Or if I want to write it as a decimal, it will be equal to 1. Because 100 divided by 100 is 1. Now, what if I say let y be equal to the percent of gallium 61, 69? And I substitute it into the equation above. So we know that gallium 71, the percent of gallium 71 plus y is equal to 1. So we replace gallium 69 with y. So y plus the percentage of gallium 71 is equal to 1. Now I want to express this in terms of gallium 71. So 1 minus y is equal to the percent of gallium 61, 71. Sorry. So what I can do now is go ahead and substitute these values into the original equation. So we're going to substitute these values here into the original equation. So wherever I see gallium 69, I'm going to replace it with y. So this here is going to become y. Wherever I see gallium 71, I'm going to replace it with y. So 1 minus y, sorry. So this becomes 1 minus y. And now, just like we do in math, we're going to go ahead and distribute, expand the brackets or remove the brackets, whichever way you choose to say it. We're still doing the same thing. So I'm going to look at these. And then we're going to expand these bra this brackets here to get rid of it, or these parentheses as you call it. And this is what we're going to end up with. Now, after we've done that from math, they will tell you now to group your like terms. So that means all the terms with Y and all the terms with Y go together. So we do this, 69.72 minus 70.9249, and we subtract the y values. We get two negative numbers, but that's okay because if we have to divide here, since the function being performed between y and negative 1.992 is a multiplication, to get rid of it, we do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we're going to divide both sides by 1.992, rather yet negative 1.992. When we do that, we get y being equal to 60.26. But that is in the decimal form. We want it in the percentage form. So we multiply 0 0.6026 by 100, and that gives us 60.26. Because we know that since y is equal to the percent of gallium 69. Now, to find the percent of gallium 71, we simply subtract 60.26 from 100. And that gives us 39.74. So the main concept in this video was actually calculating atomic mass. And to calculate atomic mass, we need to know the mass and percentage of the different isotopes. When I say percentage here, I mean percentage abundance of the different isotopes. If we have two isotopes, we do mass times percent for each isotope, then add these values together. All right, so this takes us to the end of this video. Until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.